Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials and welcome to What is Wednesday. This is the weekly show where we take one topic in web development and explain what it is. It can either be an API, a library or anything. And in this video, we're going to be covering my very most favorite GraphQL server for Node.js and that is Mercurius. Now Mercurius is the GraphQL adapter for Fastify. If you have never heard of Fastify, go ahead and watch the What is Fastify video, but the five minute, five answer, five second, whatever answer to that is really Fastify is an ExpressJS alternative. It's an HTTP client for Node.js and it's awesome. It's very fast, lots of plugins, huge community and fully TypeScript compatible. It's just really great. It's I, we use it at Level Up Tutorials and I couldn't be any happier with it. And likewise, I couldn't be any happier with Mercurius, which um, the only downside about Mercurius is that I have to figure out how to spell it each time that I'm Googling it, because I honestly don't remember if it's Mercurius, Mercurius. And honestly, I don't know. I mean, I know the origins of the word, but I have no attachments to that. So I just I never I never remember it. Um, but that's a me problem, right? Let's get into it. What is Mercurius? Well, Mercurius is a GraphQL client written for Fastify, and it's a Node.js GraphQL client. Now, again, if you don't know what GraphQL is, we also have a what is GraphQL video, but GraphQL allows you to have an API that's fully typed up and down the stack and allows you to request specific fields. It solves many problems. Again, this is not a GraphQL specific video, but what's great about Mercurius and what sets it apart? One, it's very fast. Um, ben Awad did a, just an awesome video. Maybe I'll link that in the description comparing different GraphQL servers and their speed and Mercurius like really, really cruised. Um, and in my personal ex experience, it's been very fast Two, There is really awesome support for loaders baked in. Loaders are something that solve the N plus one issue in GraphQL where you end up hitting your database or hitting a, another server too many times because you're requesting a resource that requests a resource that maybe is doing that um, in, a, you know, could easily add up to, you know, hundreds of queries if you're not careful. Um, and so you can see automatic loader integration to avoid N, one plus N queries. So this is a big thing. If you've worked in GraphQL for any amount of time, you'll know that this is a problem. And usually people just say, oh, use data loader. And then you go to data loaders website and it doesn't really connect to what you're working on. And uh, the documentation's poor and all sorts of things like that. So loaders really function just like resolvers in Mercurius. And it's so easy that it's baked in. Um, there's also support for things like subscriptions, federation, federation subscriptions, uh, gateway implementation, batched query support, which gotta love batched query support. We, we do batch queries over here, uh, customizable persisted queries. There's also like really, really great caching baked in and an easy caching plugin that comes with this. Um, so let's actually take a look at some stuff. I mean, you can see just from there, here's the docs. This docs is very well streamlined. You can say, here's all of the things you can do. You want to uh, set your context. Here's how context works. It works the same way as other Node.js GraphQL servers. Here's how loaders work. Again, um, you kind of just set up a loader for a specific type of data, and that way you can do all of your data requests in one. Also very easy, but um, as simple as adding to Mercurius is just saying, oh, here's my schema. Here's my resolvers. Oh, and yeah, here's my loaders too. Let me just solve all those performance issues. Uh, when we implemented loaders in our API, it got really fast, really quickly um, because a lot of N plus one issues. There's also a lot of hooks, pre-parsing, pre-validation, pre-execution, uh, GraphQL subscription hooks. We don't use too many of these, but they're here. Um, Lifecycle hooks, pre-validation, pre-execution, same stuff. Uh, federation. I don't use federation, but federation is uh, my understanding of federation is maybe I should do a separate video on that actually and, and do some more research. But my dumb guy opinion of a federation without doing any research is that when you you're combining multiple uh, APIs, they call them like federated. But it's when you have multiple sources for multiple different APIs into one graph um, that could if I goof that explanation up, please leave a better description or please leave a better explanation before I do some research on that um, subscriptions, batch queries, like I said, batch queries, persisted queries, all that stuff just works. Right. And there's even GraphQL over WebSocket support baked in again, not something I use, but it's here. Web GraphQL transport WS um, pretty neat. 
again, haven't used it, you can use uh, the testing and tracing that comes from Apollo. So if you said, you know, I I don't want <laughs> I, I don't want to uh, you know leave my Apollo tracing. You can see here's a Mercurius Apollo tracing plugin, and that way you can get some of the benefits of reporting performance metrics to Apollo tracing without having to use Apollo. We don't use this. Um, just haven't really found the need personally. Uh, we, our API is not that intense, but there's some really great plugins, right? So I haven't used this one, but Mercurius Upload is a file uploader for Mercurius. I'm super curious. I'm Mercurius about it. I'm sorry, people. Uh, I'm I'm Mercurius about Mercurius Upload. It looks pretty neat. Uh, Mercurius Validation. I have also not used this one. Uh, but I think the ones that we do use, we use a couple of these plugins. We use Mercurius Auth, which allows us to um, use a really neat little directive in our GraphQL API to have an auth directive here. So that way, when you require auth for something, you can just say auth requires whatever role or whatever permissions, and then you can set up your policy down here. It's really pretty nice. And my favorite Mercurius plugin is going to be the Mercurius Cache plugin, because let me tell you, uh, caching is no fun sometimes. You know, you gotta tweak it, you gotta get it all going. But with this, you're literally just saying, all right, here's the query type that I have, and just cache it. Or you can give it a direct TTL, which is time to live, time to live. We should do a video on that too. What is TTL, time to live? Um, and this is just really great. So you could say, let's say, um, where here's a query, I have a query, it's named welcome, it's TTL is five seconds. Cool, right? It's really great, you can even pass it in the Redis client if you'd like. We use Redis over here, gotta love Redis, otherwise it just does it in memory or you can do it per, per policy. Yeah, this thing is fantastic and it's basically baked in because all you have to do is say, oh yeah, by the way, use the Mercurius cache and it works. So uh, if you're looking for a lighter weight extremely fast alternative to other GraphQL server implementations, especially for Node.js. Um, Mercurius is something that we've been using in production for well over a, a year and a half now. And I gotta say, it's the best. It's so good. And I, yeah, I never see people talking about this library, and this is one of the, my favorite libraries in our entire stack. Uh, we're just saying a lot. So if you want to check out Mercurius, check it out at mercurius.dev. Again, this is by the same people behind the wonderful Fastify, and it works well with GraphQL code gen and all those things that I know and love already. So uh, again, mercurius.dev, check it out. Let me know what you think. If you're looking for a new GraphQL implementation for Node, this might just be a great option for you. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Also, if you're looking to learn modern web development, why not check out leveluptutorials.com. We have a new tutorial course every single month. Look at all of these courses. New course every single month, sign up for the year and you'll save 25% and you'll learn a whole heck of a ton about various web dev tech. Now the next course is from the amazing Amy Dutton, who let me tell you, uh, is so infectious to watch. She's so darn uh, interesting and exciting the way she explains things. You're gonna wanna check this one out. Keystone JS is a great way to build your entire application. Um, and it's a Node.js platform. It's so cool. And Amy makes it extremely exciting and interesting to listen to and learn. Or you can check out Remix for Everyone, which is my latest course. And a new course on Svelte 3D is coming this month to level up tutorials. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.